This video covers woven ply modeling. When working with composites in general, and specifically with more complicated composite ply products like weaves or filament wound parts, it's even more important to be intentional about analysis scale. Generally, we classify two composite material model scales, a micro scale, which zooms into the scale of the constituent materials, the matrix and the fiber. And this is where a multi-scale designer comes in and a toe scale, which only zooms into the scale of a single layer of composite toe. Uh, an example of this is a unidirectional product. In general, the toe scale is recommended for part and assembly model builds uh, because it's the first scale where it's reasonable to manage the details at a part level. It has the ability to interface with multi-scale material models, and it has the least amount of homogenization through thickness, which makes it easier to assess failure and apply uh, other operations like, like drape simulations. All scales above this uh, use these two material models as building blocks. Uh, one tricky part for us is that many composite products, weaves included, fall into this ply material product scale, where for a given layer in a simulation model, uh, there are actually multiple toes stacked through thickness. For example, in this weave in the image, we have a zero and 90 toe at all locations in the material. Uh, so in other words, these products can be considered at this scale a mini laminate. Uh, other examples include filament winding, where you have some winding angle, or AFP, where there's overlaps or gaps in the tape. And the challenge is that frequently material models are actually written at this scale. And a very common one, uh, weaves, for example, uh, using a 0, 090, uh, E1 is equal to E2. And moving up uh, further in the dimensional scale, we have laminates made up of one or more plies and parts and assemblies, which are made up of one or more laminates. Hypermesh supports two woven ply modeling methodologies. The first is a traditional approach, where the material properties are homogenized through the thickness of the weave. The drawbacks to this method are A, uh, it has a reduced ability to assess failure because of the homogenization through thickness. Toe scale results cannot be assessed and you're always getting some homogenized mix of matrix and fiber, regardless of direction. And while it's possible, it's not generally recommended to uh, connect a multi-scale material at this traditional scale. Further, because the warp and weft is homogenized, a constant angle between them, usually 90 degrees, but not always, is assumed uh, when the material model is written. Uh, frequently, though, uh, we're interested in draping due to compound curvature for weave-type products. And as soon as the angle between the warp and weft changes, uh, an entirely new anisotropic material must be generated to capture this angle change. Obviously, this is impractical to do for a full part or assembly. Uh, alternative to this traditional approach is a slices approach. It models the warp and weft of the weave, uh, both as unidirectional materials. And specifically, the way this is done is with four quarter thickness uh, unidirectional layers, a 0, 90, 90, 0 of a representative uni material model. Note it is possible to account for a reasonable knockdown in uni properties due to the weave. The benefits of this approach include uh, the ability to access toe scale results for failure assessment and the ability to directly hook up multi-scale materials. Additionally, uh, arbitrary spatially varying angles between the warp and weft uh, due to something like a drape simulation can be applied, and they're all handled by the same material model. Within Hypermesh, we do have the ability to uh, move between these two approaches. So to dehomogenize a material model uh, applied to a traditional approach, uh, to generate a uni or slices approach and to re-homogenize a slices approach back into a traditional model. 
To demo this, we'll go ahead and go into HyperMesh and File Open Model. We'll select Hat Woven Plies. And in this model, we have a few unidirectional uh, carbon plies, but we also have these two homogenized weave plies. The product type is set with this ply type input right here. And if I come to the assigned material, we'll see that it is homogenized with warp and weft at uh, 0 and 90, E1 being equal to E2. I can uh, move back and forth between these two material models if I only, for example, have the properties of the homogenized product, uh, simply by changing the ply type on one or more of these plies. When I attempt to do this, specifically to change it to a unidirectional weave, I'm prompted with a message uh, notifying me that I'm going to get new material properties on my material entity. And any other plies which have this assigned material will also be updated to a unidirectional weave. Note that this is only supported today for uh, 2D or MAT8 in the case of OptiStruct properties, not MAT9 ORs. That's something uh, which will be done in the future. So when I run this, I see my two plies are changed to uni weave. If I come back to my glass material, we can see that it's dehomogenized into equivalent uni properties. Uh, we do have to make a couple educated guesses here, but for typical woven products, these guesses are reasonable. To go back the other direction, simply need to change the ply type back to a homogenized, homogenized weave. I get a similar message prompting me that all plies of this type will be changed to homogenized weave and the material properties will be updated and we can see the properties are re-homogenized and I get very similar uh, re-homogenized values to what I started with. One other note when working with weaves, if I attempt to drape a homogenized weave ply, And I'll do this with the default inputs. I'll get a similar message and the draping algorithm will require actually that this uh, ply is converted to a uni weave so that both the warp and the weft angle changes can be applied. So I'll go ahead and say yes and I do get those draping results. When we review orientations for woven plies if we're using the uni type, because we're modeling both uh, fiber directions, the warp and the weft explicitly, I'll actually see both those directions drawn on the screen. And with that, that covers the available woven ply modeling options.